can draw it here quite suggestively. Um, it is often pictured as a fabric, and here I've drawn it with the earth curving and warping that fabric. And this is the, the leap, essentially. You, you get special relativity 1905, which makes this merger of space and time demanded, as Einstein said, by taking Maxwell's equation seriously. In 1915, Einstein publishes general relativity, which is simply the idea that this fabric of space and time can be warped and curved by the presence of, in this case, matter or energy in the universe. Now, that is Einstein's explanation for the force of gravity. You'll see much more of that, I think, in Gabby's talk next, about gravitational waves, waves in the fabric of the universe. But I just wanted to make the link between this and the way that Einstein's theory of gravity, essentially the idea is that things move in straight lines through this curved space, and that's what you get. For example, a planetary orbit. So Einstein applied this very famously to the orbit of Mercury shortly after he published the theory, calculated the straight line through that curved space, curved by the presence of the Earth, the Sun in this case, and got a better description of, of Mercury's orbit than Newton's. So whatever you think about the model of gravity being something to do with the curvature of the fabric of the universe, it is a better model than Newton's, a better model of gravity.